everyone, my name is Zain and I am a first year medical student from University of Sabizaya. So for this video, in this video, I want to share with you this one drug that I've just learned recently. Like the usage, the benefits, the adverse effects, the precautions that you have to follow through. And then what if you stop abruptly from using this drug, what you can give, what can, I mean how it can impact you and how, like what will happen to you, okay, something like that. So basically the drug that I'm going to talk about is actually placed or classified under this one group of drug named as benzodiazepine. This drug is actually used to reduce your brain activity, okay, it's to produce a calming effect to the patient. Okay, so this group is called as benzodiazepine is because of its chemical structure. Benzodiazepine acts on our brain and nerves. Under this group, there are a lot of drugs. The one that I'm going to focus on in this video specifically is called as lorazepam. But then, lorazepam is actually the generic name for this drug. Generic name means scientific name, international name of this drug. So, so everyone knows this drug as lorazepam. And then the brand name for this drug is called as Ativan. It's like another name of this drug but it's not really that famous and not everyone knows this drug goes by Ativan. It's actually, it specifically acts on this one system called as limbic system and in this limbic system there is a part called as um, amygdala. Amygdala is, respon is actually responsible for emotions part. It is used to treat uh, anxiety, insomnia and also it can cause or produce muscle relaxation effect. Um, that's actually the clinical usage or the, or the benefits that we can get from this drug. Okay, but it also has adverse effects. Okay, basically adverse effects here means uh, the unwanted effect that were side effects that come along with the intended effects. So, for example, just now like I said, the, the benefits that we want from this drug is actually to treat anxiety and insomnia. But then, um, in the same time, there's also the adverse effects or the unwanted effects that will come along with it. Okay, the, for example, the effects can be drowsiness, nausea, um, constipation, change in your appetite, change in sexual interest, and, and a lot more. Okay, so basically, in order for us to understand how does this drug works on our body, basically we have to understand how brain works, how human brain works. Um, have you ever wondered how can human feel emotions like angry, excitement, happy, um, sadness? Have you ever wondered about that? Okay, how does that thing work? How can we feel emotions? How can we think? How can we process information? How can we respond to our surroundings? For example, if you touch a hot subject, I'm sorry, hot object, you will directly respond by pulling your hand away automatically, right? It's because our brain, our brain is the control system here, it's actually the control center of our brain. It gives instructions. It actually processes the information and then it gives instructions to our body on how we should do, what we should think, how we should respond to our surrounding and like what should we feel on certain moments, something like that. Because in our brain it works like a um, computer, almost like a computer but of course it's not as simple. This is possible because in our brain there are billions of nerve cells that helps to transfer the information around, okay? The one that um, helps this information to be transferred is actually because we have nerve cells in our brain or it's called as, as neuron cells. These neuron cells actually transfer information from one place to another, from one neuron to another. And this process is called as neurotransmission. And the information is being transferred um, in a form of signal by neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter is the type of messenger that send the information or the signal from one neuron to another neuron and this process is called as neurotransmission and basically the neurotransmitter has a lot of types. Neurotransmitter can be divided into two types which is excitatory and also inhibitory. Excitatory allows us to feel for example like happy, excitement, um, anxious, something like that. That's the effect of excitatory neurotransmitter. The inhibitory neurotransmitter basically produces such calm effects for example like we will be mostly in a relaxed way okay we'll be relaxed we'll feel calm uh, that's how inhibitory 
inhibitory neurotransmitter works. Like we have to have these two to work in balance so that um, we can have stabilized environment in our body. This neurotransmitter is actually the one that um, is produced from one neuron and then it will be transferred to another. There is actually a very important thing here because you know, uh, in order for one neuron to another neuron um, communicate, there is actually a tiny gap between pre-synaptic and post-synaptic. It is called a synaptic cleft. So basically, the uh, the neurotransmitter will be transferred from the pre-synaptic, and then it will go through the tiny little uh, gap, which is called uh, the synaptic cleft, and then it has to bind to the receptor on the post-synaptic, and then it will go to the and, and then it will and then it will produce effect on the post-synaptic. Basically, the post-synaptic has receptors on it and the neurotransmitter has to bind onto these receptors in order for it to pass through to the post-synaptic. Lorazepam actually acts on the inhibitory um, receptor. Lorazepam, it actually helps the effects of inhibitory to give us this calm effect to ourselves. Okay, for example, like in, in, during stress moment, we tend to feel anxiety and this due to the excitatory neuron okay it fires up the signal and then it will cause this anxiety so the role of this inhibitor neurotransmitter is actually to make us to calm down again okay to give us the relaxing the calm effect okay so actually the one that i'm going to focus for in this video is the inhibitor neurotransmitter called sgaba or gamma amino butyric acid neurotransmitter so the GABA neurotransmitter will actually um, bind to its receptor. For example, during stress moment, you will feel anxiety. Okay, during stress moment, your excitatory in uh, excitatory neurotransmitter will actually fire up, give signal, and then this will cause you to feel uh, anxious. So here's where the lorazepam comes in. Okay. How does it work? It's actually like a best friend of GABA because it enhances the activity or the effect of GABA. Lorazepam will not directly help GABA, it actually indirectly helps GABA. It will only attract GABA to the receptor. Okay, it will just like attract it to the receptor so it will reduce the calm effects that overdose for the patients who have anxiety. So basically that's how it works. But this drug has the possibility for it to be abused and to cause addiction also can be drug. You cannot take this drug if you are pregnant because a bad consequence to your baby. You also shouldn't take this drug if you are breastfeeding because this drug can be transferred through your um, breastfeeding to your baby. So I think that's pretty it. Um, I think that's it for today in this video. Thank you for watching this video. So yeah, bye bye.